open our hearts to receive your forgiveness, O Lord. Lord, we lift up to you all this day.
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. In the waters of baptism, John David died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May he now share with him eternal glory. In life, John David cherished the gospel of Christ. May Christ now greet him with these words of eternal life. Come, blessed of my Father. And I place this volume of sacred scripture. In baptism, John David received the sign of the cross. May he now share in Christ's victory over sin and death. And I place the crucifix. <clears throat> and so, dear friends, it is with immense sadness we come here today to say farewell to John David Cluett. It's a time of great sadness and we, it's a time when we want to turn to the Lord as we look towards the consolation of the Holy Spirit. And John David is deeply mourned by his wife Doreen, his children Carlos, um, Rhodes and Karen, um, Lloyd, his grandchildren, Christopher, Cameron, Sebastian, Christian, Michael, Rachel, Daniel, Emma, J.D., Julia, his brother, Gonthalian, by family, by friends, by all who are gathered here. And so in this time of sadness, we turn to the Lord in prayer. Almighty God and Father, it is our certain faith that your Son, who died on the cross, was raised from the dead, the firstfruits of all who have fallen asleep. Grant that through this mystery, your servant, John David, who's gone to his rest in Christ, may share in the joy of his resurrection. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Let us please be seated, and now we're going to listen to the readings from Scripture. So we listen to the first reading. A reading from the book of Job. Job answered and said, O oh, that my words were recorded, that they were written on a scroll, that they were inscribed with an iron tool and lead, or engraved in rock forever. I know that my Redeemer lives, and in the end he will stand on the earth. And after my skin has been destroyed, yet in my flesh I will see God. I myself will see him with my own eyes, I and not another. How my heart yearns! <laughs> within me. <laughs> and now um, we pray the responsorial psalm. So we join in singing Psalm 23, The Lord is my shepherd. We can just remain seated. Just 
as green He leadeth me The quiet waters by My soul He doth restore again And me to walk doth E'en for his own name's sake Yea, though I walk in death's dark veil Yet will I feel none ill For thou art with me of my foes my head thou dost with all anoint and my cup overflows goodness and mercy Surely follow me, and in God's house forevermore, my dwelling place shall be. We now listen to the second reading. Thank you. Uh, the reading from Corinthians. We know that one who raised Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and place us with you in his presence. Everything indeed is for you, so that the grace bestowed in abundance is more and more people, may cause and thanksgiving to overflow for the glory of God. Therefore, we are not discouraged. Rather, although our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. For this momentary light, affliction is producing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. As we look not into what is seen, but what is unseen. For what is seen is trans transitory, but what is unseen is eternal. For we know that if our earth earthly dwellings a tent should be destroyed, we have a building from God, a dwelling not made from hands, eternal in heaven, the word of God. Thanks be to God. Let's please stand for the proclamation of the gospel. It's in the gospel that we hear the words of Jesus speaking to us, so we stand out of respect for the words of Jesus. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Our true home is in heaven, and Jesus Christ, whose return we long for, will come from heaven to save us. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God. Have faith also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If there were not, 
would have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am, you also may be. Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Let's please be seated. Every Sunday when we come to Mass, we profess our faith in the resurrection. The resurrection not only of Jesus of Nazareth, but of every man, woman and child from the beginning to the end of human history. And so during Mass we say the creed where we outline our faith. And near the end we come to the part where we say, we look for the resurrection of the dead. And I'm sure quite often we just say those words um, without much thinking. We give them little more than just passing attention. But then comes a day like today when those words take on a deep personal meaning for us because we are laying to rest someone we we've heard and we realize that we need to think, we want to look at the resurrection of the dead because those words become intensely personal for us because as we think about John David, we realize that life without that expectation would lack meaning, it would lack completeness. And so it is at this time that we need to draw seriously on our faith to explore its meaning with our hearts as well as with our minds. And it is at a time like this, as we are mourning the loss of John David, that the Holy Spirit, God's Spirit, comes especially close to us because we're vulnerable at this time. And we're not just, we don't really just say, but we're, always, but we're really experiencing right now our need of the Holy Spirit as comforter. There are a number of titles of the Holy Spirit in Scripture. The Holy Spirit is called Advocate and Paraclete, but it's really as comforter that we want to think of the Holy Spirit today because the Holy Spirit is the first gift of Jesus to those who believe. And the Holy Spirit comes to us as the best of comforters. Now, this comfort of the Holy Spirit is not something superficial. It won't magically take away the sorrow, the sense of loss that we feel at John David's passing. Belief in the resurrection just doesn't magically take away our grief. You see, our experience of death is a very final thing. And our faith doesn't ask us to think otherwise. So faith in the resurrection doesn't take away our tears. Instead, it allows our tears to glisten faintly in the light that lies beyond. The light in which God lives, the light that is God. And it is that light which helps to explain and give meaning to the sense that while we're still here on earth, we realize this is not everything. We have an instinct within us that we made for more than even the loveliest and the worthiest of our earthly experiences. I always like to think of our life as a series of adventures, but it concludes with the most serious adventure of all, when we must give ourselves over 
into the hands of the God who made us. This is the God who through Jesus has taught us to think of him and approach him as Abba, Father. God has given us a, a beautiful but sometimes frightening world to live in. And as Christians, we believe that God shares our life in this world by sending his son to be one of us. When Jesus was walking from village to village and town to town in Galilee, when he was preaching and teaching and healing, he used this image. He described the need for the seed of grain, a tiny seed, to fall into the ground to die before it can start growing and produce a harvest. And as we think of this image that Jesus used, <clears throat> I think it corresponds to our experience of life when we have this <clears throat> mixture of both the light and the shade. We have the mixture of times of great joy but times of immense sorrow. We have times of good health, we have times of ill health. And I know instinctively we'd like to have joy all the time without the sorrow. But that is the condition of eternity. Here, while we're still on earth, we just get glimpses, little glimpses of what eternal life with God is like. But also we remember that Jesus, God's own Son, took upon himself the dark adventure of death. On the third day, well, God raised Jesus from the dead. And the Christian church, from the very first moment of its existence, has believed and preached that what happened to Jesus would happen to us. Because Jesus is the first fruit of the whole harvest of which we are part and so we shall be raised to new life because Jesus took upon himself the experience and pain of death. And so we come here today with very heavy hearts as we mourn the loss of John David. And as we pray for the repose of his soul, we do so in the knowledge that we are also celebrating his homecoming. When Jesus was preparing for his death on the cross, at the Last Supper, he spoke to his disciples, and this is what he said to them. He said, do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God. Have faith also in me. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. And I pray that these words of Jesus to his disciples can comfort us today as with heavy hearts we mourn the loss of John David as we pray for the repose of his soul. offer up our, our prayers. We want to pray for John David and we pray for ourselves as we offer up the prayers of the faithful. So let us stand for these prayers and when our reader says, Lord, hear us, the response by everyone is, Lord, graciously hear us. And so, God, the Almighty Father, raise Christ, his Son, from the dead and with confidence we ask him to save all of his people, the living and the dead. We pray for John David, who in baptism was given the pledge of eternal life, that he may now be admitted to the company of the saints. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. 
We pray for our brother John David, who ate the body of Christ, the bread of life, that he may be raised up on the last day. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for our dear departed relatives and friends, and for all who have helped us, that they may have the reward of their goodness. And we pray especially for those dear to John David, with whom he's now reunited, including his parents, Johnny and Maruha, and his son, David. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all those who've fallen asleep in the hope of rising again, that they may see God face to face. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for the family and friends of John David. Too many to mention, so many people all across the world and here where he made his home. Father Keith has mentioned them, um, that they may all be consoled in their grief by the Lord who wept at the death of his friend Lazarus. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all of us assembled here in South Africa in the place John David embraced so wholeheartedly as his home. And we pray for those joining us virtually around the world. And all those who've been involved in saying masses to celebrate his life in places as diverse as Malta, Gibraltar and the UK, all reflecting John David's roots before he embraced this place that he loved so much. And we pray that all of us in all those places worship in faith that we may be gathered again in God's kingdom. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously, graciously hear, hear us. us. And we now pray together in the words that Jesus taught us. Together we say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. God, our shelter and our strength, you listen in love to the cry of your people. Hear the prayers we offer for John David. Cleanse him and all the faithful departed of their sins and grant them the fullness of redemption. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us please be seated. And now we have the eulogy. So I'd like to invite both Rhodes and Carlos who are going to speak in tribute of John David. Firstly, I would like to thank you all, and believe me, there are many who paid their last respects at Mosses said in Malta, Gibraltar, UK, and Ireland to honor Dad's passing. Heartfelt thanks to all. Dad, I promise this won't take too long. He knows how long I take on emails. Today we come here as it was your will and your wish to bring those most closest to you together to honor your life. A life of unconditional love to your family who you adored and kept most high on your priority list. Those who have tooled in your life will never forget the bigger than life person that you are. You have left a legacy which will be very hard to ameliorate, but will always have a special place in all our hearts. The love and strength you have shown and given to us all cannot be measured, and there is no doubt 
that you have passed that wall to your special ones, here and afar, especially to your beloved Doreen. Okay. Doreen, that strength and love has now been passed on to you. Use it wisely, because that is what he would have wanted. Live life to the full. Dad, there is so much I can say. Your, li your life speaks volumes, just like the uncountable emails, test messages, WhatsApp video calls, and phone conversations we have had all these years. I have had the pleasure to know you. You will be missed. But we will be strong and brave because that is your last blessing to us all. Now that we have, that we leave you to rest in peace and meet our Creator and your son David, I wish to finish with a passage that I had found some time ago by coincidence that personifies you and David to a T. It's heading, he only, he only takes the best. God saw that he was getting tired. A cure was not to be. So he put his arms around him and whispered, come with me. With tearful eyes, he watched him suffer and he saw him fade away. Although we loved him dearly, we could not make him stay. A golden heart stopped beating and working hands to rest. God broke our, God broke our hearts to prove to us he only takes the best. Until we meet again, Dad, we love you. John was born in Gibraltar on the 1st of March, 1938. I can clearly remember his stories of how he grew up during the Second World War and the first time he had chocolate at the age of seven. Due to the war, he only started school at Stonyhurst College when he was nine years old. The school was a traditional Catholic school run by Jes Jesuits in England. This formed the basis of his faith. John led a very active and full life right till the very end. He was a qualified brewer by trade and spent most of his life devoted to his passion of making beer. He started his career at Farsons in Malta in 1960. His passion took him all over the world, from India, Malta, South Africa, Mozambique, Namibia and China, just to name a few of the countries. It was also the reason why he came to South Africa in 1981, where he met my mother, Doreen. They got married on the 19th of March, 1982. He was made a fellow of the Institute of Brewing in 1992. I also remember how proud he was when he graduated with his master's degree in mechanical engineering from the University of Johannesburg. And that was at the good age of 62. John also published a book, Network Africa, a Complex System, at the age of 70. Even up to the last days, he showed his passion. I remember at our last family lunch visit at the end of October, he bought a variety of craft beer for the family to taste and comment on. In fact, on a personal note, he was the reason 
I'd have studied, I decided to study chemical engineering when I saw his passion for the art of making beer. I also wanted to get in on that action. John was also passionate about his family and making food. One of the family, family rituals was that John would take over the kitchen and make food on the weekends. He always tried to make something different and special for us. On one occasion, I remember he made guinea fowls on toast fried in olive oil with chocolate sauce as a topping. This ended up not being one of our favorite meals for the family, but it did not stop his enthusiasm in attempting new meals. John, we wish you farewell on your journey to eternity. Prayers and fond memories are what we have to remember you. You have left us with abundance of them. You also have touched the hearts of many people in your life. You will never be forgotten. Rest in peace. I will close with a prayer that I believe he would have liked to share with us. Death is nothing at all. I have only slipped into the next room. I am I and you are you. Whatever we were to each other, we still are. Call me by my own familiar name. Speak to me in the easy way, which we always used. Put no difference in your tone. Wear no forced air or solemnity or sorrow. Laugh as we always laughed, as little jokes together. Pray, smile, think of me, pray for me. Let my name ever be ever the household word that it always was. Let me be spoken without the effort, without the trace of the shadow in it. Life means all that is never meant. It is the same as it ever was. There is absolutely unbroken continuity. What is death but a negligible accident? Why should I be out of mind because I'm out of sight? I am waiting for you for an interval somewhere in the near future, just around the corner. All is well. I would also, behalf of my mother and our family, like to thank everyone today for attending the service. I would like to thank the readers, although I, I volunteered them, I appreciate it. Karen, Lloyd, and Deborah, thank you very much. And thanks to Father Keith for all your assistance. Thanks. Thank you for sharing all those beautiful memories of John, Carl John David. Thank you, Carlos and Rhodes. Let us stand now as we come to the final commendation and farewell. Trusting in God, we have prayed together for John David. Now we come to the last farewell. There is sadness in parting. But we take comfort in the hope that one day we shall see John David again and enjoy his friendship. Although this congregation will disperse in sorrow, the mercy of God will gather us together again in the joy of his kingdom. Therefore, let us console one another in the faith of Jesus Christ. And I'm now going to bless John David's mortal remains with incense. This is a sign of our prayers rising to the Lord. And with holy water, a reminder that through our baptism, we are born into the hope of eternal life in Christ. May the choirs of angels come to greet you. May they speed you to paradise. May the Lord unfold you in his mercy. May you find eternal life. The Lord is my 
Before whom should I tremble with fear? May the choirs of angels come to greet you. May they speed you to paradise. May the Lord unfold you in his mercy. May you find eternal life. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother John David in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon John David in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn towards us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and with you and with our brother forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Merciful Lord, you know the anguish of the sorrowful. You are attentive to the prayers of the humble. Hear your people who cry out to you in their need and strengthen their hope with your lasting goodness. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Eternal rest grant unto John David, O Lord. And may perpetual light shine upon him. May he rest in peace. Amen. May his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. And may the love of God and the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ console you and gently wipe every tear from your eyes. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. And I invite the poor bearers to come forward, and as we process from the church, I invite us all to follow behind the coffin as we process and we join in singing our final hymn. Mm. Heart beats so imperfectly. 